All right, we're going to continue on with um, section 13.3 here. We're going to try the little more complicated problems, uh, stoichiometry and mass, volume mass problems. And in this problems, we're going to have to use the ideal gas law, the PV equals NRT. And remember that for most of the time, if we use the pressure in atmospheres, we're going to use the value of R equals to 0.0821. That's the most common one we use because with the pressure we use is atmospheres. If we use a different pressure, you'll have to look up what the value of R is for the different pressures. So R changes with the units of pressure, but the most common one we use is this number for atmospheres. Okay, so we have a problem like this where we have tungsten oxide. The W stands for tungsten there. So the WO3 is tungsten oxide. Combined with hydrogen gas yields tungsten, the metal. That's what they use in light filaments. And water, a liquid water. Okay? So the problem we have here is typical problem we have is how many liters of hydrogen gas, and they give us the temperature at 35 C and the atmospheres, the pressure at point. 90 are needed to completely react with this amount of tungsten oxide, 875 grams of tungsten oxide. Okay, so we have all this information here. We have this extra stuff here, this gram stuff. Whenever you have grams in a problem, you're pretty much assured you're going to have to use the PV equals NRT. Okay, so how do we do this kind of problem? Okay, so we've got this balanced equation. We've got some temperature and pressure numbers, and we've got grams here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to is we're list out what we're given. We're given the reacted mass of 875. We're given the pressure of the hydrogen. We're given the temperature of the hydrogen. And remember, the temperatures on these gas problems have to be converted to Kelvin. So we're just going to go ahead and convert that to Kelvin. And we have to figure out what we're trying to find. The question was asking, we're trying to find the volume of the hydrogen gas in liters at some non-standard conditions. In other words, not at one atmosphere and 273 degrees K or zero Celsius. Okay, so that's what we're trying to find. Okay, so the first step is we need to find out the moles of H2 needed to complete the reaction. Okay, so they gave us grams of the tungsten oxide. So we need to figure out, okay, well, how many moles of H2 do we need to do that? Okay, so this goes back to our stoichiometry we had a couple of chapters ago where we have to do, you know, okay, if we have grams of this, how many moles we have of that, that grams to mole stuff I told you wasn't going away. Well, here it is again. It's not going away. Okay, so to do that, we had to change these grams of tungsten oxide into moles. So we do that. We set up our little conversion here. One mole of tungsten oxide weighs 231.84 grams. So we do this. This one is on the bottom. We do the division. So 875 divided by 231 gives us 3.77 moles of tungsten oxide. Okay. So now that we have the moles of tungsten oxide, we need to figure out how many moles of hydrogen we have. And so we use the mole ratios from the balanced equation, right? The ratio for here is one mole of tungsten oxide combines with three moles of hydrogen gas. Okay, so I set that up. I have this many moles from my previous calculation. I need three moles of hydrogen to react with that, with the tungsten oxide. So in my problem here, I'm going to need 11.3 moles of hydrogen gas. Okay, so great, so fine. But that's not an answer to our question, though. Our question was, what's the volume of hydrogen gas we need to solve this problem? Okay, that's where the ideal gas law comes in. Okay, because now we have moles, we have pressure, and we have temperature, and we're looking for volume. Okay, those are all the things that are in the ideal gas law. Okay, so if we set it up, change, you know, just divide by both sides by P, we're looking for volume. So that's, you know, it's a lot, probably a lot easier if you solve these um, the rearrange the variables before you plug them in. It makes the for less mistakes instead of doing it all in your calculator all in one big problem. And that's kind of a mistake um, way, an easy way to make errors if you just kind of plug it all in your calculator without writing it down. It's an easy way to make uh, simple mistakes even if you know what you're doing. Okay, so we plug in all these numbers, right? We got the moles of hydrogen that goes here. That's my n. Right, the moles of hydrogen is my N, the R is the 0 0.821, the temperature in Kelvin 
the pressure in atmospheres. We multiply everything on the top, divide by our number on the bottom, and we get 292 liters of H2. And that's what we are looking for in this problem. Okay, so it's not too hard. We just still have to remember how to go from, any, you know, given grams, how to figure out the moles thing. So that's still a skill we need to have and use here. And then when we get the moles, we're just applying that with the ideal gas law. You know, they could have asked for the pressure or the temperature. But once we, if we have a problem with moles or grams, we're, we're, we need to use the ideal gas law somewhere in there to figure out how to do these problems. Okay, so like I just said, use the ideal gas law when you have problems involving moles or grams. And if the mass of a substance is known, the ideal gas law and the proper mass to mole conversion factors can be used to calculate the volume of a gas. That's just what we did. And we can also do it the other way. We can have a volume of a gas and we can figure out also, given the volume of gas, we can figure out the uh, mass of the products. I didn't write that in there. We can figure out the mass of the products or the reactants the same way. We convert that volume to moles, right? Use the ideal gas law to figure out moles, figure out how many moles of the gas we have, and then figure out how much mass of whatever thing we're interested in in the reaction. Okay, so I hope that explains it a little better. We'll go over some of these examples in class, but that's it for the video today you may have to repeat it a couple times to get what i was saying here and we start doing the problems you may want to come back and revisit this one okay so that's it for now i'll see you guys tomorrow in class answer the questions on the form and i'll see you tomorrow